Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Complex problems like pollution, human rights, and public health can feel overwhelming. You want to throw up your hands and say, what difference can one person make? Good question. What difference can one person make? Across the Fence is collaborating with the Lake Champlain Basin Program to share with you important information about water quality. And today we're looking at how the actions of individuals help to improve the health, safety, and quality of life in our region. We begin in a backyard in Burlington. I feel like a, a personal obligation to do what I can. In the summers, we spend a lot of time in the beach and are pretty heartbroken on the days that it's closed and we can't go swimming. Um, and just thinking about the impacts that has for the human to the non-human communities and the impacts of pollution on, on the lake are pretty significant and trying to do all that we can to, to mitigate that and turn that around. Residents, homeowners, and businesses all have an impact on water quality and all can help achieve the goals of the Lake Champlain Phosphorus TMDL. A number of organizations have made resources available to help people understand stormwater and how they can get involved. The idea of keeping as much water on your property as possible is to slow the flow of going down into the lake. So trying to keep as much stormwater out of the stormwater system. Basically the entire house now has gutters where we just had them on our back porch before. Essentially all water coming off the roof is now collected in the gutters and then the downspouts are very intentionally directed to the rain barrels in the backyard and then everything from the front side of the house comes around through these gutters and down the downspout here and then we actually had a pipe trenched under the driveway to bring the water over to the garden. This is something that citizens can do um, on their own residential properties, is to really try and keep as much of the stormwater on their property as possible. There are a variety of opportunities for individuals to help. Many require only a small change in the way we do everyday tasks. The concept behind the Drain Defender program was really to connect citizens with their infrastructure. The concept is when you go onto our website and you select a drain that hasn't been already been adopted, you can see which ones have been adopted and which ones are available for adoption. Um, you're able to name the drain, then we are expecting that they would then watch after that drain. It should be another good one up here, um, and by good I mean always clogged, not always clean, but I enjoy cleaning it out. My name is Brennan Gothier. I'm a Burlington drain defender. Uh, I've adopted a number of storm drains here in the downtown Burlington. Uh, by adopting a drain, it's essentially you, need, you take care of it, make sure it's not covered with leaves or ice. Um, it's not an everyday job, um, completely volunteer, but whenever I'm walking by a storm drain and I see something on it, I'll take it off or clean it out when I can. All right, so this one has some debris in it. So there's, there's definitely a need for more drain defenders with over 3,000 uh, stormwater drains and only 246 of those having been adopted. We want people to have fun with the naming, be careful, but also think when they're cleaning their drain about how that fits into the bigger picture of water quality and our infrastructure. And that's it. We all have an opportunity to do something different, to make a different choice. And any little thing we can do, it, it does make a difference. A survey of homeowners conducted by UVM Sea Grant helped inform the Raise the Blade Outreach Program to encourage lake-friendly lawn care practices. There's actually three parts to Raise the Blade. One is to have people cut their grass not shorter than three inches. The second is to let the clippings decompose on the lawn. And the third is to not cut more than a third of the length of the blade at a time. All of those combined, they improve the soil organic matter, meaning the soil can hold more water. They improve the root systems, meaning that there's more place for the water to go and decreasing stormwater runoff as a result. So one of the things about the businesses is they often have larger lawns than homeowners. So it, and for the environment, it's really important for them to be engaged because they are creating um, stormwater mitigation sites on their properties. They're also great because they're helping us advertise this to homeowners and try to encourage other people to participate on their personal lawns. Every little bit helps and one of the things about this whole water quality total maximum daily load plan is that there's a huge land area draining to a small water area and so that means everything that we do on the land really impacts water quality. Little tiny actions like that when added up, 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, 100,000 people in Vermont making a different decision 
it, it will have benefits for Lake Champlain. You may not feel like you're doing a lot, but if you're doing your little bit on your little piece of property, um, that, that can help us launch us more towards the, su the success we need to see as far as cleaning up Lake Champlain. The Lake Champlain Sea Grant Institute cultivates and shares science-based knowledge in benefiting the environment and economies of the Lake Champlain Basin. It's a cooperative effort of the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources at UVM and the Lake Champlain Research Institute at SUNY Plattsburgh. On the Vermont side of the lake, Sea Grant is led by Chris Stepanuck. She's an Extension Assistant Professor of Watershed Science, Policy and Education. Welcome, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. So how often do you get asked, like, I'm only one person, what difference can I make? And, and what do you say? I hear it all the time. And it, I think this is an example of the, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So everything that each individual does can add up to make a really big difference over the size of the watershed that in which we live. Uh, in the context of our conversation today, as it was said in the, the video, it has to do with what we do on the land and the quality quality and the quantity of stormwater and what gets off and runs to the local water bodies that ultimately reach Lake Champlain. So the more each of us can do to limit stormwater from exiting our properties close in time to the storm uh, and encourage infiltration into the ground, the better. Um, I have a fun example of this from a, a local school that recently installed a pollinator and a rain garden. Uh, they did this in an effort to collect stormwater runoff from their school's roof so that that stormwater wouldn't run directly into the stream just behind the school. And instead, it's directed into that rain garden mm -hmm. used by plants and allows for infiltration into the ground uh, limiting the amount of stormwater that leaves that school grounds right away after a storm. Well, it's fantastic. And I, I know I use my rain barrel all the time this summer. I mean, it was so dry. Thank mm -hmm. goodness I had rain, <laughs> rain barrel to, um, for that. So rain barrels, raise a blade. What else can people do to improve water quality? So many things, and they can be from simple to complicated. Uh, in Vermont, we have a law now that requires us all to compost and not put food waste down the drain. That helps to minimize the uh, amount of nutrients that are reaching the water bodies if you're on a uh, public system. Uh, you can plant a tree. Trees are going to use a lot more water than a blade of grass, if you will. You can pick up after your dogs. Use permeable pavers, which can be um, lovely to look at and also allow water to infiltrate in your yard. You could wash your car on the lawn. You could have your septic tank inspected regularly and pumped out regularly. Uh, if you have enough land and you happen to live alongside a pond or a lake or a stream, you could have a buffer alongside that that is more of a vegetated area and not mowed right up to the edge of that water body. Uh, and one other thing that I thought of is that some communities in Vermont face what are com called combined sewer overflows. So that mm. is where we have our stormwater and our wastewater in one system. And if you are in a community like that, what one thing you can do is not do the laundry when it's raining. And the reason for that is then you aren't adding to mm. the outflow of water that's going into that public system during a time when it's already stressed because of the water that's coming off the land. Great, great, great tip. And and there, so there are all kinds of additional benefits. There are pollinators and you're actually beautifying things at the same time that you're, you're, you're helping our lake and our waterways. Yeah, absolutely. So, so take the, uh, the buffer that I was just talking about, for example, that can be a great habitat for pollinators, as you say, as well as other wildlife. And they can be really beautiful. Uh, they're also doing a couple other things. One is if you say you plant a tree, it can provide shade. So that could be for you, or that could be helping to lower the heat level within a community, mm -hmm. something called the urban heat island effect. So you can, if you have a forest or a, a treed area, tree lined street, that is a really great improvement in terms of the the heat generated from that community, if it's all impervious surfaces that will um, absorb right. that sun's heat a little bit differently. Awesome, and, and in the video, I love the drain defender program. Who, who, who knew? And why are removing leaves from a storm drain, how does that help water quality? Yeah, good question. So the leaves are, because they're a living material, they're organic, and what will happen is if you leave them there, they can actually have the, the stormwater that will flow over that drain will 
go across those leaves and it will actually leach nutrients from the leaves and bring a kind of a rich source of nutrients into the water that's making its way to the local water body, whether that be a, a stream or Lake Champlain. So taking away those leaves, putting them in a place where they can compost away from a water source directly is what is the goal. And what about the power of the purse? We we're running out of time, but I, I, I imagine we can buy things that protect water quality. Absolutely. So kind of an example that jumps to mind because it's made by a Vermont company is relates to microplastics. So tiny mm. pieces of plastic that can get into our lake. And we know that they're in Lake Champlain. Uh, so there's uh, the Rosalia project has uh, its Cora ball, which is designed to go into a washing machine and catch pieces of plastic from mm. clothing that we are wearing. And that's actually one of the largest sources is fibers of plastics in Lake Champlain. So we know it's coming through our wash and getting out through the, the wastewater treatment plants. So absolutely the things we buy, uh, you can also make decisions, for instance, about fertilizers you use on your lawn. Phosphorus is banned unless you have a soil test. So you should make sure when you're buying fertilizers that you have had a soil test. This is a great time of year uh, the, the, to do that. And you can make sure that your lawn needs the kind of nutrients that you are trying to put on it mm. wow. by having that soil test. And also, I know that um, municipalities are working on uh, salt, uh, spreading salt when it comes to salt and, and whether that's okay or, or not and when you do it or um, because that's a problem. Uh, individuals can take similar action, just 30 seconds here. Absolutely. So an individual can choose whether or not they are salting their their properties, how much they are salting, and they can try to minimize the amount. So a good rule of thumb is when you spread salt, if you do, you want to have about three inches between the different grains of salt, and that will do its job just as well uh, as if you would, were to spread more. Okay, Chris Stepanuck, thank you so much for all of, you, all of your tips. You can visit www.cleanwaterwork.com to find out, to see more videos, to find out more things that you can do to help with our water quality. Thank you again so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Mm -hmm.